Hi, uh, I'm Mikael Marin. I am a, a board member of the OpenStreetMap Foundation, and over the last year, I've had the privilege of helping to create the first complete and open map of Palestine. Uh, OpenStreetMap, if uh, you don't know, is a free data project. We are creating a free and open map of the entire world. Uh, anyone can contribute to OpenStreetMap. Anyone can use the data. We uh, survey using GPS units. We uh, trace over satellite imagery, and we collect government data sources that are free and open. Um, why do we do this? Well, if you're trying to get data, it's often very, very expensive. And even though a lot of resources go into collecting that data, it's often wrong. And there's not a whole lot you can do about that. Um, and there's an economic drive to collecting data. Places like Baghdad aren't mapped, but they are mapped in OpenStreetMap. Um, it's a really crazy idea, um, but it actually works. Uh, our maps are used by the White House, by Flickr. Uh, we're getting data donations from the United Nations. So it's become something from a crazy project to a very serious project. Uh, and about a year ago, I was contacted by an NGO called Jumpstart. And Jumpstart had a um, history of doing reconstruction projects in post-war uh, Baghdad and in Gaza. And they wanted to create a free and open map of Palestine. I thought this was, again, a crazy idea, but a very good idea, because this is a place where uh, we hear a lot of reports of violence, of conflict, but we don't know what life is really like. We're missing the context to really understand uh, what Palestine looks like to people who live there. So uh, about a year ago, uh, we started a project in Bethlehem. Uh, a dozen young engineers went out and over three weeks completely mapped Bethlehem uh, with GPS units. They walked in the hot sun. They dealt with the security situation. They encountered very strange mapping situations like roads which are one way for Palestinians and two ways for Israelis. Um, new cartography, of course, for the project, the Red Crescent instead of the Red Cross, and they did a terrific job. Uh, they finished that, um, we broke for Ramadan, and then over the next six months, it mapped every street, every point of interest in the West Bank. Every street was walked, and we now have a complete map of the West Bank. Now, in the middle of that, I'm in January, of course, there was a conflict in Gaza. And we hadn't planned on mapping in Gaza, but I got inquiries from UN agencies. Um, Ushahidi put up an instance, and there was no good map data anywhere. Uh, and there was no good map data in OpenStreetMap. So I did something about that, and I, I tweeted. Um, and that tweet got picked up by blogs, and it got picked up by Reuters. And there was something we could do, even though we couldn't go to Gaza, which is trace Yahoo imagery, which we had in southern Gaza. And uh, the response was pretty phenomenal. Uh, over uh, two weeks, uh, 24 hours a day, dozens of people were contributing mapping data, uh, finding the data sources, uh, tracing, and did an excellent job um, from, uh, from remote. Uh, on the existing data source side, we did manage to free data from uh, some UN agencies, from the European Commission, and we discovered errors, such as the BBC map here, where it was mislabeled. So it showed authorities can do a lot with uh, map data, but the crowd can add quite, uh, quite a lot of information. Uh, we only had satellite imagery for the south, so we could buy imagery uh, that was collected in the middle of the conflict on the open market. We raised 5,000 pounds in uh, four days, bought imagery, and started tracing. And then Jumpstart got uh, permission to enter Gaza um, in March to survey damage to their buildings, but they also decided to do a good turn and train the engineers there to map Gaza. And they did in record time, um, just two months. Uh, this is Gaza City today. Um, it actually looks like a city with parks, hospitals, uh, bus stops. And we actually can understand Gaza now as a place since we have information about what it looks like to live there, where things are, how things are laid out. This data is free for anyone to use, so we're doing things like ma making celebratory cakes, uh, the first Gaza tourist map, um, and applications like nationalized routing. If you're Palestinian, it takes four hours to travel from Bethlehem to Ramallah, one hour if you're Israeli. That's just the facts. Um, this is reproducible. Uh, humanitarian OpenStreetMap team is a new NGO to interface between aid organizations and our volunteer community. And our first project is to completely map Kibera, which is the largest slum in Africa. Uh, up to a million people live there, and there are no maps of what that place looks like. We're taking part in disaster response exercises like Camp Roberts, 
Every, all of our data is open, free to, to uh, trade. We use open standards, and so we can integrate with any number of tools and partners. So uh, if you'd like to talk free and open maps, Palestine, Kibera, uh, please grab me. Thank you very much.